90% of all chronic disease stems from this one lie, which is taught all over the world in universities to medical doctors, dietitians, nutritionists, personal trainers. Ready for this? Glucose is the body's preferred energy source. That's right, folks. Sugar, it does the body good. And cut. That was it. If glucose was so essential and so good, why does your body do everything in its capacity to remove the glucose from your blood as fast as possible? From an evolutionary standpoint, we would never have survived if we depended on glucose. Is that true, Mr. Caveman, sir? <sighs> an average thin person has about 100,000 calories of fat on their body. When you consume a lot of sugar, our body takes it out of the blood real fast and it's not going to burn it all up. What happens to all this excess sugar when your body removes it from the blood? Does it just evaporate? Do you pee it out? No, it gets converted to fat. It is true that some of our body does require glucose, but it's a very small percentage and that can be made by our own body very easily. Why does your body do everything in its capacity to remove the glucose from your blood as fast as possible. Here we are told that we need to consume 50 to 60% of all of our calories being carbohydrates, which turns into glucose. When you get your blood sugar tested and it comes out to be 80, which is normal, guess how much sugar that is in your blood? That's only a teaspoon. But think about how much sugar a person actually consumes on a daily basis. You're talking about a massive amount of sugar. What is all that doing in your blood? Well, your body is working like crazy to remove it. Think about the pancreas, what it has to do. It has to just literally pump out this sugar. Truth is that sugar was never supposed to be the primary fuel. It's an emergency fuel. If our bodies were designed to live on sugar, then why do we only store 1,700 calories of sugar? That's about the number of calories you consume in one day. The single biggest root cause of 90% of chronic disease is high glucose. It's the blood sugar spikes. It acts like shredded glass on the inside of the arteries, creating all sorts of inflammation. Anything over four grams of sugar, that's one teaspoon of sugar, that's like one fifth of a piece of bread, starts to create a problem in the arteries where your body has to start removing the excess. But just think about the average person, how much sugar they put into their bloodstream. Insulin has to be jacked up and produced to remove it. What happens internally is you have this high level of insulin. It just keeps removing this sugar over and over and over to the point where the body has to then compensate by producing something called insulin resistance. It slows down the sugar that goes inside the cells to prevent the cells from having glucose toxicity. Insulin resistance is your body saying to you, I've had enough. Stop giving me sugar. Here are some common symptoms. Frequent urination at night, brain fog, loss of memory, belly fat, visual problems, mood issues, anxiety, depression, the inability to go from one meal to the next without the needing of a snack, excessive hunger, cravings for carbs, heart palpitations, fluid issues in your ankles or your feet, sleep apnea. Those are just some of the initial symptoms. If we give it 15 years, then you get diabetes. Give it 25 years, we create this caramelization of your brain that's called dementia, it's type three diabetes. Chronic spiking of blood sugar causes cataracts, glaucoma, macular degeneration. Out of all the things that damages the small little arteries to your eyes, your kidney, the nervous system, and especially the inside of the arteries, it's glucose. Why aren't people worried about consuming glucose? Because of this one simple lie that we're told everywhere, that glucose is the preferred energy source. But we don't do that, right? But of course, in the food pyramid, you'll see 65% of the calories should be carbohydrate. Did you realize if you start reducing your glucose and go on a low carb diet and keep your carbohydrates below 30 grams a day? In one study, there was 90% success of coming off insulin in 10 weeks on being on a low carb diet. Out of all the things you can do for improving your health, low carb diet is at the top of the list. This lie of glucose being the preferred fuel was created by the food industry. They invaded certain industry. They have bought off scientists. They have shifted the blame on the saturated fat being the problem. And all because you can make the most profit on refined carbohydrates. Through subsidies, you can buy one metric ton of corn for $195. How many boxes of cornflakes can you make with one metric ton of corn. If you haven't tried the ketogenic diet, try it. It'll greatly help you because once you start, you're going to quickly find out that 
it's not glucose, it's ketones that your body will love the most, especially for your brain. To learn more about that, watch this video right here.